Okay, thanks for the nice uh, introduction. And here, I'm, I'm really happy to have a chance to introduce our work to you. And I also wanted to thank Rajam and Pratim for organizing such a wonderful workshop from which I have learned so much about aerospace science and engineering, and which I think will help me to think about how we can make contribution to aerospace science by using our technology. As you can see from my title, my, the content of my talk is quite different from others. This is about a uh, special structure. It's called a waste spring gallery, micro resonator, and micro lasers. And it actually has great potential for nanoscale nano sensing. Specifically, I wanted to promote this as a new technology for aerosol science. OK, so I hope Professor uh, Flaken wouldn't mind that I borrow some lines from him from his talk. Uh, the first line actually is more like endorsement for our motivation to work on the technology. It's a new measurement method. And the second one actually gives us some inside information about what kind of features we should look forward to uh, for such a new technology, for example, such as, such as a single nanoparticle resolution. Because by using a sensor that has single nanoparticle resolution, you might be able to study something that you might not be able to get by using ensemble measurements. OK, so now let's move on. Have an overview of the technology that is available for us to study nanoscale structures. As you can see from these tables, uh, there are uh, quite a lot of technologies available to study particles larger than one micron. But what if the nanoparticle is smaller than 100 nanometers? There are not many for you to use. Yeah, there are some, such as SEN, AFN. But as you, as you can see, you need to have a special training to go through the process so you can use it. And also, it's not convenient for field test. So there are many other things we should address in order to find out some very nice instrument to study some, some field test. To, and this is a wish list that we would like to, to we would like we would like to achieve. For example, label free sensing, and uh, you should have large dynamic range, and it should be inexpensive, so that maybe you can think about the form a uh, sensor network if it's not expensive at all. And also, you want it to have a portable sensor so that it can bring it over with you to do a lot of tests in different cities and different areas. And so that's what we want to achieve. For us, uh, who has background of photonics, we want to think about what is the key features we should think about uh, in order to develop such a nice sensor. And for optic sensor, we know that in order to enhance the sensitivity, one of the most important things is to think about a way to enhance light matter interactions. Keep that in mind, then we think about a resonator. So resonator is such a structure within a physical volume, you can confine light. So light has no place to escape. Instead, it stays in within the physical volume and circulate around it many times. And the number of the round trip is determined by the quality of the structures. Depending on the quality, the light can finish a tens of round trip before it, it is gone, or it can circulate around for over a million times. For that case, a single nanoparticle can interact with a light, light, a light field for over a million times. As you can imagine, in this case, you might be able to, be able to test, test even detect or even a single molecule or single nanoparticles. And here is our solution. It's called a waste spring gallery structures. As, as you can see from the slides, all the structures they share one common feature, that is circular boundaries. For such a structure, a single whisper can be heard throughout the gallery spaces. That's why it's called a whisper gallery structure. And it, is, it, it has been found a sound wave can circulate around so that a single whisper can be heard, right? And think about the sound as, as a wave. We just extend it to a different range that is light wave. So if you find a way to couple light wave within such a structure, it will circulate around as sound wave did for this in these structures. So we have the structures, and one, one interesting structure we found is a microsphere, for example, which has circular boundary, right? And uh, this movie it shows what is mode. To, for those who don't have background in optics, you can think about mode, optical mode. That is something we're going to use for sensing. Mode is something that uh, corresponds to a trajectory that can be taken by a light field. As you can see, there are different patterns, right? And I have some snapshot. And the different patterns, they, different, they, they spread around in different way. This is real focus, just around the equatorial plane. And these are more extended. And we call them as different modes. They take, they take different spatial trajectories. 
And as you can see, once you have an optic mode in the residue, then the light field is trapped inside. If it's trapped inside, then if you look at the transmission spectrum, but at this particular wavelength, because the light is trapped inside, the energy is not leaked out, so you don't have transmission. You have a res that's what we call the resin steep. So most of the time, it shows up as resin steep. And in some scenario, you will see two of those. That's the special thing about this structure. I will tell you how we use two resonance as a self to achieve a self-reference sensing. And uh, I put a human hair here. The diameter of our hair is like 15 micron. It's similar to the size of our, our structure. And uh, here is uh, the methodology that we use for sensing. So previously, what people have done a lot of work about uh, on using the resonance for sensing. Here is how it works. So uh, when you have resonance, right, at which the light is trapped inside, and if you have something attached on the surface, which can be an aerosol particles, then it will disturb the light field circulate around. What happens is there will be some resonance shift or line with broadening. Anyway, it's always some changes to the resonance. You just characterize the changes and derive what's going on on the resonator. And there is some downside. Uh, if you want to learn more, you can see the review article written by uh, Frank Roman Arnold, who um, the pioneering scientist in this community. And uh, if you want to, um, if you wanted to look at the structure, you will see that actually there's some downside of the structure because there's no reference. It is extremely sensitive. However, um, then that also tells us well, it will respond to anything attached on the surface, not just particles. For example, this temperature variation, the uh, and system instability. All of those will introduce changes. So for real test, um, you need to be very cautious. You have a very controlled environment for sensing. So how about uh, finding a find way to achieve uh, to, to get reference? That's how we do it. So we have one resonance. If you have one resonance, you find a way to create a two. Then this two, because they rewrite, they, they stay in the same structure, they serve as a reference to each other. If the sensing signal count on the relative changes of these two, then you will say, okay, there is a this is a self-reference sensing scheme. And I will explain more in details. Uh, before I address uh, my uh, introduce my technology, I wanted to say thank you to my former advisor Caltech, with Professor Kerry Vahala. He wrote a re review article on this whispering gala structure. It can be disk, ring, microsphere, and microtoroid, and he invented this on chip microtoroid on silicon wafer in 2002. Ever since then, there's, there are so many works on this structure. And specifically, we found uh, interesting sensing applications. And the thing about this whispering gala structure, and you have waveguides that be used to couple light into such a structure. As you can see, when light uh, propagated through left to right, you can see the light will circulate around in, in clockwise directions, right? If there is a light scatterer, such for example, which can be a nanoparticle, aerosol particles, it will scatter some of light back into the opposite direction and trigger another mode. And these two modes couple to each other, and the, 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 the frequency will appear at different location in the spectrum. So instead of having one resonance, you are going to have two. And the, the two is due to the light scattering from the particles. So this uh, phenomenon actually has been studied and observed over 20 years ago. But uh, previously, people just studied that as an interesting physical phenomenon. And for us, uh, when we look at this, we thought about this, you know, um, it's an interesting phenomenon. And it's triggered by a nanoparticle. So if, uh, is there a way that we can actually trace back what's going on with this nanoscatterer? Uh, nano yes, you can. Actually, there's a uh, theoretic paper talking about this. And uh, if you look at this, what we call the most splitting, uh, because two split modes, right? The most splitting spectrum. And there are two formulas will tell you what's going on, which tells you that we can quantitatively measure and characterize the splitting spectrum and get some interesting information. OK, so you can see 2G tells you separation of these two modes. And 2G and the big gamma is really is is equal is determined by the line width difference of two modes, and both of them are related to something. We, the first one is alpha. Alpha is polarizability of our particles of a scatterer, and you can see it, polarizability is is affected by, by the size. And uh, there is also f function. And what is the f function? F 
function and tells you overlap of the particle with the light field. That's reasonable, right? If there's no overlap, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be able to see any changes. And uh, omega is resonant frequency. You can read that in the transmission spectrum. The V is mode volume, the, the, mode, the volume of light field. So it's still complicated, right? And it's still also position dependent measurement. It's not useful. It's not so helpful. And uh, however, if you take a closer look at this formula and get a ratio of these two parameters, that it can be measured easily in the transmission spectrum. You find it so interesting because the ratio of these two parameters is only determined by one thing, that is polarizability. So let's reorganize the formula and the right equation describing what's, go uh, what's, going, uh, what's going on for the polarizability. So as you can see, in the most splitting trans transmission spectrum, you just measure the line width difference and uh, the separation of two modes. You will get a number. From that number, it will tell you the information about the polarizability. And this is real-time measurement. Initially, you have one resonance. And if you intentionally introduce a particle onto, uh, onto the structure, you will see one resonance is splitting the two. And uh, this is uh, our experiment setup. And the, as an expert in aerosol science, you might be very familiar with the structure. And uh, this is a collaborative work with Professor Darren Chen. He provided this, structure, uh, this uh, facility to us so that we can deposit well-controlled nanoparticles onto the resonator. And it, as you can see, initially, if there's nothing on the resonator, you have one resonance. We have particle introduced onto the structure, one resonance splitting the two. And if, uh, if more particle is deposited on the structure, the further it changes to the splitting spectrum. We can analyze them one by one and get the size information. And the C here is how, what we have done to prove all method that did work. So this, uh, this data, the y-axis shows data we measured using our tiny sensor. The x-axis shows the size information we, uh, we, we, we found by using a scanning electron microscope, which is a traditional method people use to measure the size of nanoparticles. And we also mix different particles, which can be different, uh, uh, the same species with different size or complete different species, chemical composition. And you can see this tiny sensor can differentiate different groups of particles. And uh, uh, so that being said, we did show that uh, by using such a tiny structure, you can achieve a self-reference sensing and its position in the dependent measurement. That's really helpful. Because for real sensing test, how can you know the location of a tiny nanoparticle onto your structure? And uh, for such a structure, you can do single shot measurement. You don't need to statistics study to get size information. And this is a movie we, we, we recorded, and show, which shows that uh, the most splitting techniques and how it works. Initially, we have one resonance. When you deposit particle one by one on the structure, you can see gradual changes, discrete changes in the spectrum. And we can analyze, analyze them one by one. So in summary, here is how the technology works. Um, you have a whispering gala structure. If there is a nanoscatterer sitting on the ring, then you'll find out a single mode will split into two. By analyzing the location and appearance of mode in the transmission spectrum, you will be able to detect and do quantitative measurement of the particle size. And uh, now you have resonance sensing. You might ask, uh, is there a way to further improve sensitivity? Yes, you can. For resonance-based sensor, what do we count on? is to measure the changes to resonance, right? If you find a way to narrow down the line waves, as you can see, you further increase the res sensing resolution of a structure. Because compared to these two cases, when the resonance is broad, even if it's a tiny changes to the resonance, you might not be able to see that. Because the new signal is you have great overlap with the original one, right? It's, so the, you cannot tell whether there's a changes or not. However, if the not line width of this one is really narrow, even if there are some tiny changes caused by very small particles, the new signal will com detach completely from the new one, and you will be able to see that. So by narrowing down the line width, to do that, we introduce all the gain median into the structure. That By doing that, we can narrow down the line width, which have demonstrated that uh, you can increase sensitivity uh, of the resonant based sensor. And here's one case study showing how we can use for aerosol science. So we introduce uh, potassium chloride particles, just one, onto the resonator, and introduce the local humidity 
of the of the environment, and you can see the gradual changes uh, of the size. And uh, this measurement is compared with data that has been demonstrated by another group, uh, a Stanfield group at Caltech, and it meshes pretty well. And so this is a, a ongoing project, and but it's very encouraging to show that it can be used to for this single nanoparticle study, especially for aerosol science. And uh, also, in addition to science, you might be curious about, for example, what kind of feature, what else can we can we get by using resin structure? And that's what we are working on right now. Uh, one is we uh, try to integrate a Raman spectrometer within the resin structure. We found that by using resonance effect, we can further enhance the Raman signals from such a structure. And we know that Raman signal can actually tell you the molecular fingerprint of, of, of the materials attached on the surface. And we have shown it, it works. We can use it. If you use standard Raman spectrum, spectrometers, you might not be able to see the Raman signal from a tiny particle unless you have a huge amount of nanoparticles. And for those uh, resin structure, you just have a few nanoparticles, you will be able to get enough signature from this setup. And uh, so I hope I haven't used up uh, 15 minutes yet. There's no sign from Jay. Uh, okay, I would like to acknowledge uh, this, um, the, the, the support from my funding agency, that is NSF and uh, ARO. And I also wanted to thank again the EEC department and the case organization to, for, for such a wonderful event. And I, must, I myself really is like an elementary school student for being here. And I am really, really educated and really appreciate so much about the wonderful talks from all of you. Okay, thanks again.